We must always start with the foundation of all our teachings, which is scripture. Always. If you want to study any of the sacraments or any teaching, church teaching, always go to the scripture. That is the literal source. It's the foundation source. And you need to understand that. And all our sacraments have their bases in scripture. So for those of you who've got your Bible with you, it is the appearance of Jesus to the disciples after his resurrection. So it's John 20, 19 to 23. John 20, 19 to 23. This is the basis of the sacrament. So you see that last verse, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. This is just after Jesus has given them the Holy Spirit. And this is important to, us to note. A lot of people think the Holy Spirit is received by the apostles at Pentecost. No, it's here. The apostles receive the Holy Spirit uh, in a sense, earlier than the other disciples. So Jesus appears to them, he gives them the Holy Spirit, and then he says, go and forgive people their sins. The apostles pass that on to their successors, the bishops, who then, because they are unable to meet, to meet everyone's needs, pass that on to their priests, that authority. So the basis for that is, the basis for the sacrament then is, you go to a priest you are going to Jesus, who has given himself to the apostles through the Holy Spirit. And you are saying, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Now this is very difficult. This is the hardest sacrament in the church. Um, it's the one that's most least used. Uh, and that's, for me, that's, that's very sad, because for me, it's the most beautiful. If you came to me, and you said to me, Father, um, I'm going to die in, in three days, what shall I do? The first thing I would say to you, without even knowing who you were, is I'd say, go to reconciliation. Because when Jesus says, ask and you will receive, if you just ask for his mercy, it doesn't matter how bad or good you've been, he will promise you mercy. Okay? So that's the basis of conversion. Remember I said to you, every day we convert. Every day we, 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 re, we recommit ourselves to our baptismal conversion. Every day. Um, God's mercy our asking for God's mercy is the basis. If you go into scripture, there are 110 times the Bible speaks to us of repenting or knowing repentance. 110 times. What the scriptures are telling us is that God has great mercy, but you have to ask for it. Why do we ask the priest? Because Jesus told us to in this very scripture. That's the basis of it, going to a priest. Okay. Just to give one more obligation, um, to receive Holy Communion, the church teaches in the Catechism that you must go to reconciliation at least once a year. Now, most Catholics don't know that because teacher priests haven't taught them because they don't think, priests think that they don't like it and therefore they don't tell them. Whereas I realise you're above that, you like truth and you can work out truth for yourself and what you do with it. So the truth is you need to go once a year to receive, to receive Holy Communion. If you haven't been in a year and I've told people this, and it actually increases their love for the Eucharist, then don't receive. Stop receiving until you've been. The teaching of the church is that we have this relationship with Jesus. And this is going to, this is going to simplify this right down. We've got this relationship with Jesus, perfect union, where we're literally, and I, this is how I look at it, and I'm quite a simple person, so bear with me. I look at it that Jesus is in my heart right now. And I really truly look at it. And I make my home for him there. And literally have made a home for him. He dwells in my heart. Now, if I break a, one of the Ten Commandments seriously, which is what's considered a mortal sin, the, the simplest understanding of a mortal sin is to break one of the Ten Commandments seriously. So let's give an example of that. Um, if I went and stole a lolly, would that be stealing seriously? But if I stole, and, and this is quantifying, which you have to be careful of, but if I went and stole $1,000, or if I went and stole the um, false teeth of my next-door neighbour, then I'm sinning seriously against that, you see? So it's, 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 the church doesn't go through and give a list of every single possible sin, and whether it's mortal or venial. It, what it says to you is, you need to know in your own heart that if you think you've sinned in a serious manner against the Ten Commandments, go to your priest and tell him. 
And your priest will tell you whether you have or not. Now, some people are over-scrupulous. And your priest will say, that's over-scrupulous. Don't worry about it. It's really not that bad, you know? Your next door neighbor never, never needed him false teeth anyway. You've actually done her a favor. Um, <laughs> or your, your priest will say, you did well to come. You did well to come. It, it's important to face this issue in your life. Oh, if I come from my own perspective, if I think in any way that I've gone to Jesus and grabbed him and taken him and pushed him out of my heart, then I need to go to confession. That's the way I look at it. So if I've chosen something else over him, then for me, I've committed a mortal sin, and a mortal sin is pushing him out of my heart. And you can do that. Mother Teresa said it's possible for your soul to, to, to dry up, which means for me, your house crumbles. I'm a very visual person, so what I do, if I ever think there's something happened in my life that I've pushed Jesus out, I go back, I go to confession, and I love it. I go back to Jesus, and I take him by the hand, and I say, I'm sorry, Jesus, come back into my heart. And he comes back in with sweetness and light and we're mates again. Okay, does that help him? Yeah, but work with, work with a confessor. It's good to go to confession to one priest, and that's really hard because they're going to get to know you, and it's embarrassing to go back and saying the same old thing again. But it's good. Well, I found it good because I've got the same confessor, and I have to face up, and I tell you, there's certain sins in my life or struggles I have that having to face up to the same confessor again I think I'd rather not go back there, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to have that conversation or say that stupid thing. Or... So um, I found it very helpful, but it takes real courage. It takes real courage. If you get down to, to, to bare basics, you just you go in. The priest needs to know how long it's been since your last confession. Why does he need to know? Speaking from a confessor's perspective, is straight away I know whether you're regular or not. If you come and you say, it's been two weeks, then I know you're regular, I know more than likely your faith is regular, and there's going to be a different approach than if you come and say it's been 10 years. You know, for someone who's 10 years, I need to take a completely different approach. Jesus would be a lot more gentle to someone for 10 years. Okay, he's still very gentle, of course, but someone who's fitter, so to speak, spiritually, can be challenged a little bit more. Does that make sense? So you say, Father, it's been such and such since my last confession. These are my sins, and you get on with them. How much, I think you asked, how specific should you be? Um, very specific. I, for me, the more specific I am, the more honest I'm treating Jesus, I'm speaking to Jesus. If I just say, you know, just the usual, um, <laughs> Well, then the priest is thinking, what's the heck's the usual, you know? And it's almost like saying to Jesus, and it can be embarrassing, you know, it can, especially if, it's, if sexual sin's involved, it can be embarrassing. It's like, you know, you, know I don't, you don't like talking about it. But for me, if we, we're all sexual. We're all sexual, so we have to face up to it sooner or later. The priest has heard it, I can promise you, hundreds of times before. You're no different. Um, and if that's a particular struggle, face up to it. Because if you're not facing up to it now, you're going to have to face up to it later anyway. And, and if confession is really used honestly and regularly, you watch the difference. You're just, your life, for me, my life has changed. Um, meeting Jesus in that way and being accountable. And, and I've seen such deep, deep healing in my heart. But at the start, it can, can be quite difficult, you know. And, and the devil's always picking at you saying, you know, you don't need to do that, you know. What's the priest going to think? And who's he? Just a man anyway, and just constantly picking at you. But what did, what did St. Thomas Aquinas say to us? What are the three best ways to heaven? Humility, humility, and humility. Do you know what the best sacrament that brings humility is? Confession. Humbling yourself before another human being, saying, I'm a human, I'm weak. How much more humble can you get?